Commander, we have arrived at Jump Station. Welcome back. When last that we were talking about the Klangali Scorpion, I left you with uh, Star Colonel Myers interrogating Hal uh, to find out that the Smoke Jaguars were heading for a resupply depot far down the Exodus Road. Okay, so now begins part two. Obsessed with absorbing the generic material of the last generation of Smoke Jaguars, Myers took his elite 35th Scorpion Crusaders, a Scorpion Imperado cluster from Alpha Galaxy, and foolishly pursued the prospective colonists to Wayside 5 without Summeroff's permission or regard for provisions for the year long trip there and back again. He and his fleet finally arrived at Wayside 5 system on May 25, 3062. When Contacted by Moon, Myers issued his batch off. I am Galaxy Commander Rick Myers of Alpha Galaxy, personal commander of the 35th Scorpion Crusaders. I have come to harvest this colony, the last vestige of the once plowed, proud clan smoke jaguar. In a trial of possession, I intend to take you as a whole. Your remains will be preserved and stored in our hallowed halls. Your genes will be ours to use as we see fit. I mean to take this world as our own, and your people will be my Islora. With what forces will you defend this planet, Paul Moon, of the Jaguars? Well, Moon had no choice but to accept Myers Batchel. For the forthcoming battle, he could muster only rough cluster, a rough cluster compromise of a trinary of former Jaguar troops which had accompanied him to the new colony, as well as a binary of older, poorly maintained battle mechs from the abandoned 47th garrison cluster of the Smoke Jaguar Zeta Galaxy, under the command of Star Captain Ave Weaver. These were piloted by aged Jaguar warriors who were too old to die in battle, but too old to waste sending home. Since Myers had no prior knowledge of the existence of this forgotten garrison binary, a moon turned the tables on him. Using the clan rules of engagement against the Goliath Scorpions, the former Smoke Jaguar, aided by Baldor and Enema of the Novacats, divisively defe decisively defeated Myers on June 2, 3062, in a narrow, steep walled canyon called the Straits. In the aftermath, Moon treated Myers and the captured Goliath Scorpions as prisoners of wars in the inner sphere sense. As Myers had intended to replenish his food stocks after defeating the former Smoke Jaguars, the Goliath Scorpions did not have enough for the year-long journey back to clan space. Consequently, by the terms of the batch all, Moon not only took all the battle mechs, weapons, equipment, and vehicles that Myers had brought with him to Wayside 5 as spoils, but forced Myers and his Goliath Scorpion personnel, including the jump ship crews, to farm and tend livestock in order to raise enough food for their journey home. Those who wanted to stay could, but those who returned would have to purge the ship's maps of the location of Wayside 5 and never reveal its location. Myers and most of the survivors of, the, of his cluster returned to Huntress on, in March of 3064 after doing their duty as prisoner of wars on Wayside 5, which they had begun calling Myers' Folly. Even more humiliating for Meyer was the desertion of a handful of his warriors who chose to remain with the former Smoke Jaguars as colonists and help create the Fidelis under Moon's leadership as Kustos. A week after the return, Khan Suvarov dressed down the ragged Myers, angrily reminding him that, and I quote, You took one of the clan's best clusters and he set off along the Exodus Road in hopes of capturing the Smoke Jaguar warriors. This is not for our clan, but for your ego. You travel all the way only to fail, and now you stand before me, a galaxy commander who left the majority of his command in the hands of subordinates, with nothing to show for your efforts. Your cluster lost all of its equipment, and it's only by the grace of Paul Moon that you're allowed to return here. Rarely has a warrior in any clan ever failed so completely as you did and still live, Rick Myers. 
While Suvorov was considering his fate, Myers explained that he had learned a great deal about himself and that he had been broken by Moon and remained as and remade as a new man and had paid a heavy price for his arrogance. He therefore asked for a second chance, a chance at redemption and to present himself as a warrior and to restore his honor in his Khan's eye. Suvorov took pity on Myers and agrees to give him a chance, but he would have to retest for the position as Alpha Galaxy Commander. And should he succeed, he would then tell her plans of the Indiri Light Horse. The Absorption of the 71st Light Horse, The Wars of Reveying and Abjuration. This is where it gets fun, guys. At some point in 3068, Goliath Scorpion took part in the 71st Light Horse Regiment of the Indiri Light Horse as bondsmen. Uh, as living relics of the original Star League, the Light Horse had been the sort of intense fascination by the Scorpions. When Clan Diamond Shark could no longer provide communication provisions, Khan Ariel, Suvorov authorizes seekers to approach the Star League Embassy and its ELH garrison. Subsequently, the Scorpion merchant class was allowed to provide the services to the mercies while including them in on, on Goliath's Scorpion culture. When the Jihad purged the inner sphere into chaos and destruction, some of the remaining Star League Embassy staff chose to be evacuated by the Diamond Charge back to the inner sphere. The 71st Light Horse and other staff did not share those sentiments. Colonel Sandra Barkley used her newfound knowledge of clan customs to declare a trial of possession for the Scorpion's Huntress Enclave. If they lost, they offered themselves up to, the absor to be absorbed by the clan. The trial was a hard-fought victory for the Scorpions, whether they took the light battalion that remained as Abaka in what could be described as a celebratory atmosphere. <coughs> the Scorpions emerged from the wars of reading Reaving as the second most powerful clan. Having avoided much of the bloodshed and having absorbed the last uh, remains of Clan Icelium, they had established forward outposts on the way for point 3531 and resumed the Seeker's operations. In December 3078, the Scorpions defended Hector against a Clan cold, uh, Cloud uh, Cobra assault. During the fighting, the Bright League Genetic Research Station, one salvo from a Scorpion mech, blew the main bridge, dropping half of the 73rd Cobra Guards into the ravine. The Cobras declared the remaining Scorpions de Grasa and crushed them. Upon clearing the remains of their Islora, they discovered that a Scorpion scientist without authorization from the Khans or the Oily Khans Council had been experimenting with integrating Indiri Light Horse genes in the clan legacies. The matter was brought to the Grand Council and a trial of abjuration was immediately approved. Despite this, the clans moved slowly to carry it out and this allowed the Scorpions to evacuate much of their assets to Wayport 531. The forces left behind fought valiantly but were ultimately defeated. The survivors gathered at Waypoint 531, then moved on to conquer the Ulamid, Caliphate, and Nueva Castile, forming the Scorpion Imperado in 3080 culture. Clan Goliath Scorpion's culture is devoted almost entirely to rebuilding the Shattered Star League. This obsession with searching the past to unlock the future is fulfilled through use of Necrosa and the Seeker tradition. So you might be asking, what are Seekers? Well, a Goliath Scorpion Seeker is my next chapter. The Seeker movement was created by Lord Master Lan Kirov as a means for the clan to fulfill itself a pointed goal <coughs> of looking into the past to rebuild the future. Seekers are independent nomadic warriors operating outside the bonds of normal military hierarchy and charged with finding lost artifacts of the destroyed Star League. It is by this method that Clan Goliath Scorpion has one of the largest collections of Star League knowledge safely stored within the Temple of the Nine Muses beneath its fortress's spider home on Roche. Permission must be granted for a warrior to embark on one of these quests, often results of a necrosa induced vision granting them the supposed location of an item, and prior to leaving they must take an oath known as a Reed of the Seeker. If they fail to return to the clan, the Seeker 
would be um, branded a bandit if they succeeded partially if their request was a novel or legendary adventure the secrets return would win them the immense recognition potentially proving their suitability for a particular blood name or nomination for a command position each seeker much like the knights errant of medieval europe was allowed their own personal retrainers known as charges these personal bondsmen could be drawn from any of the clan's case through the use of standard clan trials, which themselves became something of a spectator sport within the clan. Potential charges for their part were motivated to excel in their duties and so possibly catch the eye of a seeker. In keeping with clan uh, cultural customs, it was considered highly dishonorable for a seeker to acquire more charges than necessary, forcing them to strike a balance between quality and quantity. In the addition to the charges, a seeker could also fight trials for supplies they might need, such as food or vehicles, taking them, taking these items as simple as Laura. Within a seeker's routine, routine each charge had a specific role, a oh, retinue, or another word for uh, uh, his group of confidants. Uh, the war case bondsman, given the title of yeoman, performed the same task as normal bondsmen. The title of tinkers were given to technicians charged with the vehicle maintenance and battlefield savage. Labor bondsmen or footmen were charged with taking care of the seekers' pets known as familiars. The less common sutlers, sages, were merchants and scientists case bondsmen who act as advisors to seeker on particularly lengthy quests. Most significant of all of these were the harbingers, artists who acted as each uh, seeker's chief chronicle and artisan. The artists rarely praised with normal uh, clan society could gain nearly the same respect as that of the warrior to whom they were bonded. These charges and familiars created a living heraldry that was used to recognize the warrior even when they were veiled behind the standard scorpion uniform and became almost like an external codex familiars that's kind of interesting they had familiars familiars are pets originally associated with the seekers movement <coughs> essentially living trophies a familiar represent a characteristic which was admired by a warrior or represented a far-flung world she or he had visited in his or her travel Eventually, certain familiars also became associated with specific bloodlines, such as graceful swans for the Dinors. Uh, by the time the clan introduced the practice of keeping familiars, had spread to other members of the warrior caste and even among some members of the science and merchant class. Zokari. When Sakan Scott fought Lord Master Kara for control of the secret movement, she wielded a pair of sharp knives familiar in form to the Zifkwar carried by the ancient Terran <coughs> Prophet Muhammad. In honor uh, of her sacrifice, the clan leadership instituted the custom of carrying paired daggers modeled on Scott's weapons called Zorkai. One Zorkai is traditionally black hilted with a golden tassel while the other reverses the color scheme. Dance of the Scars. This ritualized form of combat traces lineage directly back to the infamous knife fight between Sakan Scott and Lord Master Kira for control of the Seekers. A modified, uh, excuse me, <coughs> a modified circle of equals. Dance of Scars requires the combatants to strike each other in a precisely defined series of cuts. The first two cuts must be made across each shoulder followed by cuts across each wrist and finally cuts across the center of chest. The warrior to make the fifth and final cut on his opponent is declared the winner. While normally conducted unarmored or a number of scorpion warriors began challenging others to dance of scars while piling mechs in the years following the clan invasion, considering these fights to be the ultimate show of honor. Uh, this is now an excerpt from the clan Goliath Scorpion Remembrance. Passage three search 316 verse 12 lines 1 1 through 8 on the black seam they dance moonlit steel gleaming in the twilight black and gold red and silver their clothes stir 
and the still night air. Five steps taken, five cuts drawn, the scars of morose tri tribulation. These pay heed to our debt, to our past, reborn with the death of our mother. <coughs> okay. Let's get to the uh, military, uh, the totem for Clan Goliath Scorpion. Uh, first of all, let's begin with it was highly regimented, especially given that the solitary nature of their uh, seeker tradition. Each cluster and trinary was a mixed force comprised of uh, varying levels of battle mechs, aerospace fighters, and elementals. Mech stars were um, typically light to heavyweight machines, fast enough to envelop enemies' flanks while providing the main knockout punch during ground assaults. The aerospace stars were dominated by heavy fighters for ground support missions, while elementals were trained to act in concert with mechs and fighters, as well as perform paradrops into contested combat zone. The newly developed Undine, Undine battle armor also allowed the clan to combat enemies in underwater environments. Laser weapons were prized by the clan, both for the precision and lack of ammunition requirements. Uh, okay, and also qualities very useful to the nomadic seekers since they could replenish that often. While missile weapons were seen as tools of the unskilled, targeting computers were used extensively as well. The warriors would often disable parts of these systems in order to showcase their true skill. This display of warrior skill was highly praised within the clan, especially in the honor duels governed by Zilbrigan. Scorpion, uh, Glass Scorpion was sticklers in upholding the brigand uh, than even Clan Jade Falcon or Blood Spirits, in spite of the lessons learned during the clan invasion. For all its strength, uh, the Lyoscopian military doctrines were predictable and focused entirely on ground operations. While enjoying a respectable number of warships and similar craft, they lacked the experience or access to combat against an opponent challenging their control of the aerospace realm. Perhaps their biggest flaw in this doctrine, contrary to the dualistic nature of their seekers, was a tendency for God's commanders to micromanage their forces, resulting in a lack of initiative among the lower ranks. Now let's uh, finish with the inner clan relations. <coughs> clan Glyph Scorpion had relatively few friends or enemies for the most part in their history. In part, this was due to the fact that of their nomadic nature left their territory relatively underdeveloped by clan standards. While this caused them to be seen as backwards economically and military by other clans, it also meant there were fewer targets to fight over and so less incline, inclination to raid their space. Prior to the decision, Goliath Scorpions were loyal allies of Clan Wolf, although this was very much a one-sided relationship. The sundering of the wolves and creation of Clan Wolf in exile did cause Goliath Scorpions to start second-guessing the state of affairs. Clan Ice Hellion was considered one of the few mortal entities, enemies of uh, Goliath Scorpions, although Clan Fire Mandrel was also hated for the brutal murder of their first Lord Master. Ironically, they dismissed Nova Cat's first uh, vision as mysticism, of mysticism as nonsense. So the way we do it's okay, but the way you guys do it is garbage. Go figure. Clannish, 100%. Uh, that's it, guys. That's the history that I've learned about Clan Goliath Scorpion. Um, very little um, information is out there on them. I totally dig the fact that they have a medieval tint to them, including retainers and all that. Yeah, it, so to me, it was very interesting reading up on these guys. That's one of the reasons why I decided I was going to do this particular clan instead of my favorite clan, Clan Wolf. The fact that they were a uh, ally of Clan Wolf leads me to wonder how they're going to take the wolves now sitting on uh, Terra as the ill clan. That's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you like this video. If you do, please press the like button. And uh, although this is a video that I am doing that is going to be absolutely uh, child friendly and you won't be able to post, if you can post on the, um, when I share it 
in the, uh, the the group for Central Florida Battletech. When I share it there, if you can go there and make comments on what you think I should do or not do next in the future, it will be greatly appreciated. That's all I have for you. You guys take care.